Just in the last few minutes or so, Afghan officials now saying the death toll is up to 90 people and more than 400 injured in this blast. And they're warning this number, these numbers could still increase even further over the course of the next day or so. This was a massive bomb just outside the main diplomatic area in downtown Kabul. This is an area that anyone who spent any time in Kabul has seen or gone through uh, pretty regularly. The crater from the size of this blast was 13 feet deep in a concrete road area. I mean, this was a, uh, this was a big area where a lot of trucks go through. This was a main road and the crater was still 13 feet deep. The blast was felt and did damage more than a mile away uh, across all of Kabul. There were injuries and significant damage, not only to the German embassy and the Turkish embassy in that area, but also to a local television station that was right there. Now, neither ISIS nor the Taliban have claimed credit uh, or responsibility for this attack. The Taliban actually have even condemned it, saying that there was uh, civilians in the area. But ISAF and international officials are looking at both of those groups because they've carried out this type of attack uh, previously in Kabul and really across the country. But the real concern is how did this vehicle, this large tanker truck full of explosives, get into the middle of the diplomatic area? There was a checkpoint there, but this vehicle had to get through multiple checkpoints to get there. And it really does suggest once again that the Afghan security forces are not up to the task of protecting not only the diplomatic area, but the larger city of Kabul and really across the country. This is what the White House is struggling with right now. There are talks about uh, sending more U.S. troops. The Pentagon is pushing to send roughly 5,000 or so more U.S. troops into Afghanistan. The White House is weighing this offer, this contemplation about expanding the U.S. presence in Afghanistan once again, but there are obviously real reservations. What will these U.S. troops do if they're there? And what type of impact would they have on the battlefield against the Taliban in the first place? And would we see a significant increase in U.S. casualties there if the U.S. and the Pentagon do send additional troops there? That's the real concern. Today's attack only makes that distinction and that, that decision much more difficult about whether or not the U.S. should intervene even further into Afghanistan, Heather. Connor Powell, live for us. Thank you, Connor.